Swift provides one really obscure, really complex, but really important feature called opaque return types that help us reduce complexity in our code. Now, honestly, I would not include these in a beginner's course if it weren't for one simple fact. The very first Swift UI code you'll see in Xcode uses opaque return types. Every Swift UI code uses it. It's really important. Now, pro tip before we start, you don't have to understand how these things actually work. What matters is you know what they mean and roughly what they do. Now, as you're following along, you might be thinking to yourself, is it really useful? Please trust me, please stick with it. It is useful, try to power through. You will see it from second one in SwiftUI. It's that common. Okay, disclaimer out of the way. Let's implement two simple functions. First one, get random number returns int between one and six, and then get random bool, which returns bool.random. Now bool.random returns either true or false randomly. Unlike uh, integers and decimals, we haven't got to specify any parameters here. It's only true or false, that's what it does. Now both int and bool conform to a common Swift protocol called equatable, which means these things can be compared for equality. Is three equal to three? Is five equal to nine? And so forth. And the equatable protocol is what allows us to use equals equals to compare two instances of the same type, like this. We could say print get random number is equal to get random number, which is true or false. It's random, right? Now, again, both int and bool conform to equatable. And as a result, we could try amending our function to return an equatable value like this. Returns equatable in both those places. However, that code will not work. And Swift will throw up an error that is deeply unhelpful at this point in your Swift career. It'll say protocol equatable can only be used as a generic constraint because it has self or associated type requirements. <laughs> what Swift error means is uh, returning equatable does not make sense. And understanding why it doesn't make sense is the key to understanding opaque return types. First up, easy bit. Yes, you can return protocols from functions. Of course you can. In fact, often it's a helpful thing to do. For example, you might have some function that finds car rentals uh, for users. It'll ask questions like, well, how many passengers do you have? How much luggage do you have? And based on the input you're working with, it'll send back a return type, maybe a, a compact, maybe an SUV, maybe a minivan, depending on your requirements. That's what it can do, return the exact types of struct, for example. Now in this case, it can return three kinds of things compact, SUV, or minivan. And so we don't want to have three different functions. We want to return a protocol, some kind of vehicle that is uh, conforming to by all those structs, the protocol. And so whoever calls a function will get back some kind of car that matches their request. Here's the, the right car for you, which might be a minivan, an SUV, a compact, a sedan, or who knows what, right? without us having to write 10 different functions for all possible car varieties. Now, each of these things will implement all the same methods and properties as required by our vehicle protocol, which means they are interchangeable. From a coding perspective, we don't really care which one we get back. As long as it supports, you know, fit people five or add luggage three large or whatever, I don't know, the basic things vehicles are required. Now think about ints and bulls. Yes, they both conform to equatable. We can compare five to five and true to false and so forth, but they aren't interchangeable. We can't say print five is equal to true. Swift will not let us do that regardless of what protocols they conform to. Now returning a protocol is useful because it lets us hide information. We can say, rather than getting an exact kind of car back, it returns an SUV. Instead, we focus on functionality. These are the things we need. It might say, 
uh, report back the number of seats it has or how much fuel it uses or how much it costs. Those are things we care about when it comes to the kind of car inside there. And it means we're keeping the flexibility inside our code. We can later on say, you know, actually, um, I want to add some more types here. I want to add a, a race car or a pickup truck as return types inside my function because ultimately the return type is a vehicle. doesn't matter. As long as those new types conform to vehicle, you can return them. So hiding information in this way is really useful, but it's just not possible with equatable because it makes no sense. You cannot have one equatable and another equatable and use equals equals. Even if we call get random number twice to get two integers, we still can't compare them because we've hidden their type. We've discarded the fact that integers, Swift just goes, ah, they're equatable. It could be any kind of equatable, so it can't compare them. This is where opaque return types arrive on the scene. They let us hide information in our code, but not from the Swift compiler. I'll explain. This means we can return a new type in the future. You know, I'm bored of SUVs, return minivans now. I'm bored of minivans, return sports cars, whatever. We reserve the right to keep our code flexible internally. What we send back can change. But Swift internally, the compiler, looks at the code and says, okay, it always sends back a truck or sends back an SUV or whatever. It understands the actual type of data being sent back. So we hide it for flexibility. So we can change our minds later without breaking the rest of our code. But Swift knows what's up. It knows what's really going back. <laughs> and let's have a go at using these to upgrade our functions. You have treats already. No more treats for you. You're not hungry at all. You're telling lies. Anyway, let's upgrade our functions to support this. We're going to say get random number returns some equatable and random bool returns some equatable like that. We're saying it'll be equatable, but it'll be some specific kind of equatable. In this case, Swift can see it'll be an integer really. And with that in place, we can now run our code. The answer is false. We had two random numbers made and they did not match. But it understands behind the scenes, it will send back an equatable value that happens to be an integer. Now, from our perspective, we still have an equatable. If I call get random number, you'll see I get back an equatable. It says in the, in the code completion at the bottom there in, in, in purple, equatable. If I do let num equals get random number, and then look at num inside here, you'll see it's equatable. But Swift knows what it really is behind the scenes. Swift knows it's actually an integer, so it can be compared with other integers. Now, returning an opaque return type like this means we still get to focus on the functionality we want. It's some kind of vehicle, for example, which in turn allows us to change our mind later on to say, okay, let's no longer do int.random, let's do double.random, right? And now it's, it's still fine. That's still allowed. It'll now be a double going back. It's still equatable. Swift's still happy. We can change our mind freely and the code works great. We're going to change the whole rest of our code to go from int to double, which we would have done if we'd been explicit. If I had a return type int here, everywhere that this function was called would say, I expect an integer here. Why give me a double? So some equatable allows us to change our mind later. But the real advantage here, the real power thing, is that Swift always knows the actual type of data going back. He understands what it really is. It is a, a subtle distinction. But if we return a vehicle, a straight protocol returns vehicle, it means any sort of type that conforms to the vehicle protocol, but we don't know what car, sedan, truck, minivan, whatever, right? Whereas returning some vehicle or some equatable or whatever means a specific 
sort of vehicle type, but we don't want to say which one. We want to keep our options open. <laughs> At this point, I feel basically certain your head is spinning. So I want to give you a real example of why this is so heavily used in SwiftUI. SwiftUI needs to know exactly what kind of layout you want to have in your code, what you want to show on the screen. And so it's our job to write code to describe it. So in English, we might say uh, there's a screen and a toolbar at the top, a tab bar at the bottom, and in the middle is a big scrolling grid of color icons, each of which has a label below uh, saying what the icon means, written in a bold font, and when you tap it, a message appears. We just describe our layout, and obviously not in English, but in Swift. When Swift UI asks for our layout, that description, the, the whole paragraph of English text, becomes the return type for our layout. It returns exactly that. There is a navigation bar, tab bar, the scrolling grid is our turn type. And so you've got to be explicit about every single thing you want to appear, exactly describing every single thing you want to appear, including positions, colors, font sizes, and more. Could you imagine typing that as a return type? It'd be vicious. It'd be impossible to understand. It would be, bluntly, a mile long. And worse, every time you change your layout, your code, you have to change your return type to match. This is where opaque return types come to the rescue. Swift has a protocol called view, like this. And view is brilliant because it's used for some kind of thing we want to appear on the screen. Buttons, images, text, and more are all views, as are shapes, circles, squares, rounded rects, and so forth. They're all views. And so when it comes to describing what our layout returns, we say some kind of view, some view. We don't want to say what it is. We want to keep our options open. But Swift internally can say, aha, it's a tab bar and a navigation bar and a scrolling grid. So Swift knows exactly what's being returned, even though we haven't had to specify ourselves. And therefore, Swift will use that to create the correct layout for us. Now, like I said at the beginning, they are very honestly obscure feature and they're very complex, but they're so critically important to the way Swift UI works. And I genuinely wouldn't cover them if it weren't for the fact that your very first Swift UI app you make, the very first Swift UI code you see will have some view as the return type. So when you see that in your Swift UI code, you haven't got to remember exactly what it does or how to make them yada yada. yada. All it's doing is saying to Swift, this is gonna send back some kind of view layout stacks of stuff, scrolling, navigation bars, who knows what, but I don't want to have to write out the exact thing. I want you to figure it out for yourself. 